And um, and then uh, we get Batman come in. And then Batman tells, you know, he sees, I think the two of the goons get shot. And then Batman's just like, put the guns away. He's like, let me handle this, you know, because Batman does not like guns. Nope. So then he goes after, you know, quote unquote, the Red Hood. And, um, b- you know, Batman sort of extends his hand because um, the Joker looks like he's about to jump into a vat of chemicals. And uh, Batman extends his hand, but Joker's like, nope. Because he thinks that, you know, he's going to kill him. Yeah. So he jumps into the vat of chemicals. The chemicals are released and he's released in like to the sewer. Somehow he ends up outside. And then that's where we see him get up and, you know, take off his cloak and take off his red hood. And then he just eerily, you know, I think he just starts to laugh he shows uncontrollably. His, yeah, he shows his back to us at first. And, you know, I think it's cool how... You know, they said that, oh, you need to be a red hood, so you need to wear a, a, a tuxedo with a bow tie for that yeah. night. Yeah. And then when Joker gets dipped in this acid, it looks like it's turning a little purple. Like the yeah. tux, that's where we get, you know, Joker's tux from, or the, the purple tux. Yeah. Um, and then you see Joker with his hands in his, in, his, in his face. And the last shot of that panel is the iconic, you know, Joker going crazy. Like, that's the moment he snapped. Yeah. That's the moment, you know, his wife's dead, nothing to live for. Now he's some freak who's... Who can't stop laughing? Who can't stop? Yeah, or and smiling. Uh, yeah, no, such a great, such a great panel there. Yeah, beautiful artwork. All right, then we have um, more scenes of like uh, Gordon or Joker trying to to break Gordon, and Batman finally shows up. Oh, thank God! So Batman shows up, and when he walks up, he eerily sees jim gordon being held in a cage. You know, like a like an animal, like not even like a prisoner. He's like an animal. Yeah. And and then this scene, you know, it's it's uh, it's bringing up again the whole, um, you know, how about this is going to end exactly. How's this going to end with both of us? So then we get this exchange between Batman and Gordon, and this is actually really important because you know Gordon tries to explain to him, you know, that he was trying to do this to me. He was trying to make me crazy, and he's like, I want you to go after him, and I want you to bring him in, and I want him brought in by the book. Yeah, and then Batman goes, I'll do my best. Yeah. So then uh, Batman goes after Joker and Joker kind of like went into like the fun house and they're he, they're Batman's chasing after him. Yeah. And of course, there's like Indiana Jones Temple of Doom where <laughs> there's like a bunch of um, booby traps, booby traps and obstacles that Batman has to get through. All the meanwhile, Joker is giving his monologue and telling Batman about, you know, his plan or the purpose of this, the purpose of everything. Yeah. And I think it's really important, too. And I think it's really interesting that um Joker tells Batman that his whole this whole plan was to prove that him and you and everybody are you are me, the same. everybody yeah <laughs> he wanted to prove how similar everybody is and that it only takes one bad day to turn a man mad and oh god his his point is just I don't know I just think it's really cool yeah because basically he's trying to you know he's, he's he has an inner conflict with himself like he's he's in denial saying you know what? i'm not crazy it's just what happened to me and you, you know, know what, what I mean? too and i think it i think it um it tells a lot about um superheroes and super villains because if you think about it everybody in these stories their their choices are all about how they personally respond to tragedy in their lives like some people use tragedy and they turn it into and they turn into something good and they turn into you know av- to these people to avenge they turn into people you know for justice and some people take tragedy like the joker who's and they go the opposite his, direction and they go with the opposite them. way mm-hmm. and i think that's such a beautiful statement about you know how everybody's similar until they're given that choice and it's all in a response to something really tragic happening in their lives it's just such a ah it's such a resonating theme and it's just such a I love it. I thought it was cool. Yeah. And then so I think also does Batman, I think he tells Joker, you know what? You know, it's not just the bad day that you're you're just crazy. Yeah. And he's trying to get under Joker's skin, I think. Yeah. By saying stuff like that. But there's after they duke it out, I think Joker kind of gets a couple hits in. He gouges Batman's eyes at once and then he like hits him in the back of the head with like a two by four. And he also cuts him with a knife. Yeah, that's true. And then also he tries to use that stinger thing or that buzzer thing on him that'll, you know, yeah. the toxin thing. 
Um, but then there's a, a point in the uh, story where Batman tries to talk to Joker one last time and, you know, tell him, you know what? We've been dancing for so many, this many years, but I still like that. I still have hope for you. I still can help you if you just let me help you. And this is actually a very different interaction between the Joker and Batman because... This is like a side of Batman that I didn't see before. Yeah. Well, well, I've seen before, but you rarely see. And this is also a side of Joker where you rarely see. Exactly. Because it's not... It almost is like... It's not like he's being insincere. It's like he's telling Batman straight to his face very emotionally that I'm sorry, but there's no help for me. You know, like I'm a lost cause. It's too late for that. Yeah. And you see almost tear fo- tears forming in his eyes or he's drawn as if, you know, he's having a very emotional reaction to that, you know, help. And the way like Batman's talking to Joker, like here's a quote. He says, it doesn't have to end like that. I don't know what it was that bent your life out of shape, but who knows? Maybe I've been there too. Maybe I can help. Like you don't see Batman say that a lot. Because you think about it too. It's like the Batman's life Everything Batman has chosen was a response to his tragedy. You know what I mean? The tragedy of the loss of his parents. Joker went through a similar loss and they just split two different paths. So Batman understands, you know, can understand how that pain can sort of take you on a different path. Yeah. And then um, he also says, you know, we could work together. I could rehabilitate you. You needn't be the one. Yeah, uh, you needn't be out there on the edge anymore. You needn't be alone. And I, when I heard read, when I read that quote, I was like, "Wow!" Like Joker, like he's just he's real. He's like a lonely guy. Like, yeah, he has nobody. Like he's just a lonely guy. You know, no one can relate to him, and it makes you kind of like feel a little bit for Joker at this point, even it, though he it does really does. Things. It's just this comic comes like it pulls on a bunch of different emotions. And this is, that's where we see the, you know, the very emotional response from the Joker. And he says, I think the quote is, um, no, but I'm, I'm sorry, but it's far too late for that. And then. And then he, he says, you know what? The situation reminds me of a joke, dot, dot, dot. Yeah. And then we get the killing joke. We get to the final couple panels. Yeah. And Joker tells. 